Today, we're going to be talking about Black Mirror and End of the Effing World. So stay tuned. Welcome to The Real Review, sponsored by Parametric and Lazy Ape Studios, where you get some of the latest happenings, real thoughts, and perspectives in the world of film and television. Yes. I am Joel Cunningham. I am Matthew Hay, the hey, Matt second. Hay. Let's get right at No, I'm kidding. How are you doing, Matt? I'm good. You're doing good. Doing super awesome. Awesome. Uh, I've been painting and packing, getting ready to, our, to put our house on the market, so I'm like, I'm like, I don't sleep. What are you painting? The house. Just repainting rooms. the house before you move? Different rooms, yeah. Has it it's sold? No, it's not so. It not. Oh, so you're painting. So we're so painting it. Gotcha. It's it's gonna it's going to market in like a week and a half. So if you guys uh, want to buy a house in Gilbert, <laughs> Arizona, let's take this time to promote yes, all the things we're exactly. selling. I'm selling a book Plug. that I just released, yes. and you're selling a house. True story. So if you've got a little bit of money or a lot of money, yeah. you have options. <laughs> True story. <laughs> there you go. Cool. Well, welcome to the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Today is our two talk episode. We haven't done one of these in a while. Yep. Uh, mainly because we've been watching things, but we haven't had time, and or we just haven't had anything really to talk about. There's not a lot of new TV stuff. Plus, yeah. it's Oscar season, so like there's 30 movies that are out right. that so we're, we're trying to watch. Yeah. So we've been focusing our time there yeah. on the film coverage. Matt, you've been doing an amazing job. I know. Yeah. I'm really proud of myself. You've been doing great this yeah. Oscar season. <laughs> uh, but we're going to be talking about two shows uh, that we both have had the chance to watch one of, and I've had a chance to watch two of. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Black Mirror, the first one we're going to be talking about that yeah. we both got a chance to see. And then I'm going to be talking about a Netflix show called End of the Effing World. And uh, why don't we start with Black Mirror? Yeah. Why don't we do that? Black so, Mirror. What were your thoughts on this season for? I really liked it. Did you? Um, I did. I did really like it. And yeah. and I, I mentioned this to you earlier, and I think we have a little bit of differing op- opinions on this. Yes. I For the most part, there are obviously ones that don't end this way, but for the most part, this season is a little bit more optimistic <laughs> in its tone. In a sense, In it a does. sense. As far as the way it ends. I mean, right. my favorite episode is still the first episode, the USS Callister one. Yeah. It was just really, really well done. Um, and it ended on a, on a high note, and there's a, like a little... Uh, a little voice cameo. I thought that was cool. Yeah, by Aaron Paul. I was yeah. like, hey, that's cool. <laughs> I was like, ah, look. I was like yeah. almost wondering, he was like, is he in the Breaking Bad universe playing this? That would right. be funny. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. sounded like him. It sounded like yeah. Jesse Pinkman. Yeah, it did. It's like, come on, bro. Yeah. yeah like, it's pretty funny. Uh, I would agree with that. I liked this season, I, but I think the biggest issue I had almost with the season was I felt like too many of the episodes ended very optimistically. That's what I'm saying. That's so what I'm really, saying. That's our difference of opinions. Right, there. yeah. It, there was definitely, and I say that weirdly, there was definitely some dark, dark things that happened over the course yeah. of the episodes and the season. Um, but the endings were weirdly kind of hopeful. And right. I know people, are, you know, and I don't want to Well, there's a couple that weren't. But, there's two that come to mind that weren't hopeful. Yeah. Um, yeah, the metalhead Ar- and uh, Archangel Gearhead. is a metalhead. Yeah, Metal- yeah, yeah, metalhead and Archangel. Again, yes, but in the sense of uh, d- horrible things happened in the episode. Yeah, but justice was being done by the end of the episode. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, what? she 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 gets caught. What? You know what I mean? In the yeah. end of the episode, right? After- Wait, you're talking about uh, talking- metalhead? I'm talking about crocodile. Sorry. Oh, you're talking, about, talking crocodile. about crocodile. Yeah, 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 yeah. Archangel. I was like, I was like, yeah. how is that justice? <laughs> like, yeah, I understand the moral dilemma of I was talking it. about episode three. You're talking right. about episode two. So, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, the yeah, moral yeah. dilemma of of Archangel, yeah, I understand the, like, you know, you're controlling me, you're, you're, you know, diving too much in my life, but at the same yeah. time, you don't beat your mom to death with a tablet. Well, she's not dead. <laughs> I know. Yeah, but... But you still it, yeah. don't beat her with a tablet. Right. That, that got really dark. I would say that was one of the d- definitely darker moments right. of the series. I mean, Black Museum at the end had a lot of really in the individual stories oh, yeah. dark moments really really dark it. moments it's kind of like like you know this is gonna be an episode all about mini stories and the whole time i was like how is this gonna tie together all day? yeah but again i didn't really like that i hate to say that because i understand <laughs> why it ended the way it did yeah but i th- this it gets really tough to say because people are gonna be like wow you're kind of a jerk and like <laughs> you support horrible awful things but the thing is is like most of the episodes of the show leave you with that feeling of like ooh, like icky kind of like uh skin one of my crawling. favorite episodes is white bear yeah 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 and it, and it's not always deserved it's not yeah. always like the people that end up in these horrible circumstances kind of like deserve these horrible awful things that mm-hmm. happen to them and that's kind of why i like the show this one felt almost like justice will prevail 
a lot of times in the endings of the well, episodes. Maybe they like, got to balance it out, you know? Like, I know, but yeah. I, I just, that's not why I watch Black Mirror. <laughs> and I know it sounds weird again because everyone's like, wow, Joel's kind of like a gross guy. <laughs> really like, into this dark place, but Joel. <laughs> I mean, I'm not wanting, I'm not wanting like justice to not right. prevail. I, sure. I, I like that, but not with Black Mirror right. in a sense. <laughs> and I could go through and like I could individually explain it. Yeah. But I just didn't, it felt a lot more hopeful. Full in yeah. a weird way. Yeah. That, that, no. I like hopeful. I'm up I don't know why I'm doing this. But anyways, yeah. I'm hopeful, but I uh I'm always wanting to be optimistic. The only happy. episode out of this that I really needed to kind of end hopefully um was probably hang the DJ. Just because yeah. of the overall structure of I was it I'm still even it. a little bit murky on what exactly happened at the end, but yeah. it's all good. Well let's talk about that because okay. that's kinda <laughs> obviously a very big aspect of this season is that they've and the spoilers here if you don't want anything about black mirror well, we you know on, you should know tube talk we always spoil what we talk about right. so but I, i've been be very, surprised <laughs> i've been trying very hard with this episode not to spoil anything i us. i have been spoiling things so you have been but yeah, I, I said haven't. beating someone with a tablet you did so, yeah yeah but then you don't know who's who's being <laughs> yeah. who and why right, right? exactly so, or yeah sure what it's kind of good. tablet is yeah. it a you know is it a droid yeah, tablet or been, an android yeah. tablet so, yeah. whatever uh <laughs> so black museum was in a sense a summary of prior episodes and prior plot lines and points in a lot of ways. Dude there was, was like a the of, collector. Right. Um there was a a apparently in this episode they're portraying the idea that these episodes might actually all take place in the same universe. Right. In the same world. And that's such a crazy thing. Mm-hmm. Because up until this point, there's been kind of minor tie ins here and there. Like a song. Like a song yeah. and everything. But there has never been this overall like boom, everything exists in the same world type right. idea. And so that was like- This painted like a parent. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Mind-blowing mm-hmm. in, in a way. And I thought that was really cool with the mm-hmm. episode. I mean, to think that somehow all these take place in the same timeline, it'll be interesting to see if that plays out. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many more seasons they're going to have. You know what I, I mean? I don't know either. I feel like they could go indefinitely, you know, because they're not, I mean, they're tied together, but they're not like, it's not like a cohesive story, you know? Yeah, it limits the scope. Because, I mean, we had an episode, I think it was last season, with the bees or whatever, where, like, yeah. a giant chunk of the population just gets wiped out, yeah. right? You know what I mean? So, it's like, it limits the scope of what they can do sometimes, mm-hmm. because, obviously, at that point, you can't blow up the Earth maybe unless they're it's, like, way Earths. in the future. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe they figure out it's one of these episodes how to, like, jump through different, like, you dimensions know, realities and dimensions yeah. and stuff. I don't know. But there definitely was pretty, like, shocking to yeah. think that all these episodes could somehow be related. Right, I thought right. that was pretty cool, though. That is cool. Uh, I re- did really like that, yeah. yeah. Uh, there was some definitely dark moments. I mean, the story of the guy with the, the pain receptor. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah, going, yeah, for sure. Going crazy. Um, I think Callister was, had some moments of really craziness of like, yeah. you know, losing your ability to like breathe. Yeah, the whole face just goes away. All of your your mouth, your nose, your eyes. Yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, that was really creepy. Um, Hang the DJ didn't really have too much of that. Although I will say Hang the DJ, which is, you know, an episode about two people kind of trying to find true love. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was probably the most relatable episode that, I, right. that I've seen of the show so far. Yeah. Because like, I'm, you know, I'm not married right now yeah. and I feel like I've been through yeah, been the through experience of like, you know, you date the girl and you're stuck in the relationship while everybody out there is just dating around and dating all these people yeah. and you're just stuck in this, not to bash on anybody that I've dated, but sure, it just sure, felt sure. relatable in the sense of like, I can't make it work. Right, you know? right, right. Um, so yeah. No, that's funny. Yeah. And um. I, it got really, yeah, it got really dark for me in Archangel just because how re- real it felt, but also like there's a lot of like questions on today's like society and some of the stuff that, yeah. you know, with that. But at the same thing, the the crocodile one, man, she just, she yeah. just took it to another level. She was that just was like, awful. oh, this person's got to die. This per-. And then at the very end, that was hard for me a little yeah. bit, just... You know, that was really, really difficult the way yeah. that, that played out. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But it's almost... At the same time, it, there's the justice because of the guinea pig. Right. But that was, was kind of like, like what? I was kind of like, I was like, oh, I mean, I was like, I don't yeah. know about you, but like when that moment happened, I was like, you can't leave any witnesses yeah. alive. <laughs> I was like, who would have thought a guinea pig? You know what I, I mean? Know, but, I know. but like, that was amazing in a way because you're just like, I, was, I wasn't I was expecting it. Yeah. It was a great tie in. That one that. made me feel bad for a while. Here, here's the thing. With with shows that are like that that have really really dark themes, yeah, it was like that for me with Sons of Anarchy. I could only made it a certain amount before I had to right. stop watching because it, it affects me so much that if I watch it, the rest of the day I am like, I'm like just thinking about it and yeah. I'm like wallowing in it and I'm like I'm like super sad and like oh really emotional. So right. for me watching this, that's probably why watching this season of Black Mirror was maybe a little bit more enjoyable for me mm-hmm. because it's like yay, it was more hopeful. <laughs> I mean that was probably out of all the episodes, the one with like the darkest ending. Oh yeah, the most like darkest possible things yeah. happening. 
uh, there was definitely some dark stuff in a lot of the other episodes, Black Mirror and Metalhead was pretty bad, but yeah. at the same time it was, we've seen that world, we've right. seen that dystopian kind of mm-hmm. world portrayed, which again, that's like, well, where does that pl- take place on the timeline? Right. They're all related. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah. uh, overall rating for the, for the season. I really liked it. Um, I would give it a 87. Yeah. Yeah. I'd probably do about the same actually, cool. like 87, 86, 87. Yeah. So. B plus ish. B plus, yay. Cool. Let's move into our last uh, show we're going to be talking about today, which is a show called The End of the Effing World. And I have not <laughs> seen this show, so I don't know anything about it. But, oh, yeah. wait. I know. I did see a trailer. It's like a uh, sociopath, like psycho child or something like that. Yeah. And, so it's a dark comedy. Yeah. Uh, the synopsis for this on Rotten Tomatoes, it's very simple. A darkly comedic road trip tale about two confused teen outsiders. Right. <laughs> confused uh, teens. Yeah. So it premiered like January, first week of January on um, Netflix, Netflix and it it suggested it. I don't always take this. It suggests some really stupid stuff on Netflix, but I was hearing some good stuff as well. Um, I'll usually take suggestions and then look at it and think like, man, does it intrigue me? And then right. I'll look at some reviews. And it was getting good, really good reviews. It's actually really highly rated right now. It's got 97% on tom- uh, Tomato yeah. Meter. It's that got a 93% of audience score. Um, so overall, and it's got a pretty high rating up there. Um, I would say this, this, so this was a series that it does a really good job of of sort of finding that fine line between sort of dark tragedy, kind of sadness, yeah. bad things happening in the comedy. Okay. And it doesn't ever force itself into the comedic zone. And it doesn't feel like when a dark moment happens, they're just, you're waiting for a joke to be cracked. Right. It does a great job of like letting you sit and kind of stew in those darker moments and letting you sit and stew in kind of like the more lighthearted moments. Mm-hmm. And some of the humor there really is funny because it catches you off guard. And I think that's one of the best things about it is you're constantly like, what? What? I didn't see. Yeah. <laughs> there's definitely things that happen and you get where it's kind of building towards um, with the relationships and you kind of see how it's playing out. But it was funny because at the end of the first episode, uh, with this one, I'm I I am gonna again not try and spoil too much here, but you kind of get the sense at the end of the first episode, like crud, where's this going? Like, yeah, I, I, where can this go? Where where can, where go can this here? possibly? Because they start the road trip, but they don't really have a direction right. for the road so trip. Just going somewhere, right? And so you're like, well, how can that you make that interesting and relatable? Right. It's just two people that are just going. Yeah, um, and they do a really good job okay. of through these two characters because you've got one kid. Um, you finished Alex, the whole thing, right? I did. Yeah. Okay, cool. James, played by Alex Lothar, who I haven't seen in a ton. Uh, is in this sort of relationship with Jessica Barden playing this girl named Alyssa. Um, so the boy and the girl, they go on this road trip and they both got their own issues. You know, Alyssa's kind of broken because mm-hmm. of family issues and some really gross stuff that kind of like her, right. her stepfather or yeah. whatever boyfriend, her mom's boyfriend has kind of been engaging in yeah. potentially. And uh, James is basically like this mentally kind of like you don't know what's going on. But over I'm, the course of yeah. over the course of the show, it starts to make more sense. Okay, and they lay those things out, and you start to get to know the characters a lot better, and you start to really relate to them. Yeah, and they make some really poor decisions for sure. But yeah, you you get that these are young kids. Yeah, they're making decisions out of emotion, and somewhat justified in some of the decisions, and mm-hmm. then definitely others you're like not justified. Yeah, yeah, yeah shouldn't yeah. have done that, you know. Um, but it's funny at the same time. And okay, so the, interesting. The darkness of it at times. Kind of, it's like the darkness. Yeah, the dark, the darkness of the characters, and it's interesting because it's. I would say as much as it's a dark comedy tale, it's also a bit of a love story okay. because the two main the, characters yeah. are kind of dating each other. But you know, at the beginning, at least in their own messed up way. Yeah, at the yeah. beginning, at least James is not interested really in her at all and there's like scenes of like her kissing him and she's mm-hmm. just like you know horrible at kissing but she's like just trying to like go to town and, kissing him. <laughs> and he's just kind of sitting there like what's going on i'm not interested in this at all and it's like funny like that, yeah, that because there's just two extremes you know and That's then it's funny. it's like over time through going through the crucible and all these horrible crazy things they kind of like start to connect in a deeper way and mm-hmm. you understand like why these characters are good and you end with this real feeling of just like wow it's going to be interesting to see where they go in the next season. Um, mm. It ends in a pretty, like, strong way. Okay. Uh, I don't want to go there, but it definitely ends in a way where it's like, well, you've resolved a lot of yeah. things, or at least positioned things to be resolved very shortly after the beginning of season one. Um, so I don't really know. Yeah, 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 They're yeah. definitely going to make a season two. I mean, at least a season two because sure. this is just too successful yeah I, think, for the oh, I, I would imagine so yeah. yeah um so i would say great job with the acting as well these young kids 
They cool. did an awesome job with the acting. Really quirky, kind of fun story. The cinematography at times is like different and odd and very weirdly relatable, but not at the same time. Okay. I don't want to say relatable because yeah, it's about fine. psych you know, psychopath sure. and yeah. a girl that's kind of really so. relatable. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's fun. And I, yeah. I didn't talk too much about Alyssa's, but her character, she's this like like calls it like it is, kind of like, you know, indignant, right like self righteous kind yeah. of girl. But she doesn't really have a lot of knowledge. She's not right. necessarily like the smartest person. So she calls it like it is a lot of times and she's wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? But she's like, she's too prideful to like admit that. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. so she's constantly throwing these and there's <laughs> great one liners that are kind of in it. So, That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, I would actually rate this, I would give it um, an A minus, uh, a Hello. 90. But very, very cautionary tale as well. This is not for young audiences. Oh, I think the title suggests that. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, the, there's gore, there's, I don't think there's any nudity, but there's definitely a lot of foul language, yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of adult themes, mm-hmm. a lot of like adult elements and yeah. story pro- progressions and stuff. So yeah, not for a young audience. Gotcha. Uh, but maybe if you're older and you want to check it out or family and whatever. Yeah. Cool. So gotcha. that's it. Sweet. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up then. Let's do it, man. On Tube Talk. Yeah. Uh, again, some ways to get connected. RealReviewMedia.com, the newsletter. We also have our Facebook, which is Facebook.com slash RealReviewMedia. Our Instagram and Twitter are both at RealReviewMedia. And then we would love to hear from you. Love your thoughts and perspectives on Tube Talk and stuff. We're going to be talking yes. about The Flash and stuff coming yep. up. Uh, Email us, RealReviewMedia at gmail.com. So, do and, it. And anything else? No, that's right. it, man. All right. Well, it's been real. It's been real. <laughs>